Hi and welcome. In this tutorial, I want to discuss camera color profiles and how to create your own custom camera color profile for different lighting conditions. It really is the best way to make sure that your colors are accurate and consistent under different lighting conditions. And if you've got different camera bodies. Now, first, let's understand a little bit about profiles. The raw data on your memory card is not an image. It's just data. It's zeros and ones generated as a result of light falling on your camera photosites on your camera sensor. Now, a camera profile is needed to convert this data into an image. Now, the, the default profile is now Adobe Color, which Adobe provides to get you started. It will do a good job of rendering out your colors. However, it's not as good as having a profile generated in the specific lighting conditions that you're shooting in. So creating your own custom profile will ensure that your colors are correct, regardless of the light that you're shooting. So to view realistic color, just select the profile for the lighting conditions at the time you created the image. Okay, well, let's do it. Okay, to create your own camera color profile, you will need the following three things. Firstly, you need to shoot in the camera raw format. Secondly, you need to have access to a color checkered target chart. And three, you need to download the Adobe DNG profile editor for Windows or OS X, depending on what operating system you use. Here are the download links for the Adobe DNG Profile Editor for Windows or for OS X. Right, the first thing we need to do is set your camera's white balance to custom white balance and adjusting it by using the white balance target on the opposite side of the color checker patches. Now on my camera, there's a simpler way. I can just point my camera at a white piece of paper in the light that I'm wanting to, to, um, to color balance and press the shutter button. The camera then uses this to set a custom white balance and saves it in the camera. Your camera will probably have a very similar thing where you can do that. Either way, you need to set a white balance in your camera for the actual light that you're wanting to profile. Next, we need to place the color checker target in the light that you want to create a profile for. Now, make sure it's evenly lit and has got no shadows on it. Make sure that your exposure is accurate. If any color square is too light or too dark, the profiling software will not be able to create a profile. If you're not sure, you can always bracket your images so one of them should work. And once you've got the photographs, you download them onto your computer. Next, we need to open the Adobe DNG Profile Editor software. Now, Adobe's DNG Editor is a free standalone piece of software that will allow you to create and edit DNG camera profiles. It's great for creating a general purpose profile that will improve your camera's color response under any light source by just creating a profile. Now the images that you use of the color checker must be in DNG format. So if they are your native RAW format, just convert them to DNG using Lightroom or Camera RAW. Now don't worry if you, you don't have to convert all your files to DNG if you do not have a DNG workflow, just the ones for the color checker that you use to create the profile. And let's quickly have a look at that. If I click there, you can see that I've now opened up my DNG profile editor. Now I need to find that file that I took of my color checker. So I'm going to go up to the file menu and choose open DNG image. And then I'm going to navigate to where that is. And if I remember, I actually dropped that on my desktop. So I just scroll down a little bit. There we are. This is the pro this is the, the profile that I want to create of daylight, which I so I, I put this in daylight and took a photograph of it and it's a DNG file. So I'm going to click open and that will open it up in the profile editor. Now I just want to make sure that I go over and I click on the chart tab 
and then I make sure that both color tables is selected here from the little drop down and then there's create color table but I'll, I'll leave that for a minute because I don't want to click that yet because now what you'll see is that the color checker has actually got these little dots now and these are color coordinated so basically this like this little greeny one here what I've got to do is to put that where the the corresponding color swatches so if I click on that and drag it I can drag it and just drop it onto that color the brown one I'll click and I'll drag it and drop it onto that color uh, the white one I'll drag it and drop it over there and this black one I'll drag it and drop it over that one uh, and now everything should be synchronized and I can click on create color table and then it's going to tell me that this color table is built successfully and this color table is my actual profile so I can click OK now we've created the profile I need to export it and I'm going to go back up to the file menu and export my Olympus EM1X profile I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to navigate to somewhere where I've created a folder and I've created a folder on my desktop called profiles and it's empty at the moment but what it's going to do now it's going to receive my untitled recipe DCP file and recipes are what they call these profiles but I could put something in here now to say to describe what the profile is because it's telling me what the camera is so I could put in here and say this is a daylight profile and then I'm going to click save and that's going to tell me it was exported successfully and that's great right now you can see I'm in my profiles folder and I've got the profile that I just created my daylight profile now to get this into camera raw it's got to be a zip file so I've got to compress this now uh, so all I'm going to do is I just click on it to select it and I right click and I go send to and compressed zip folder and I click on that and it, it remembers the name but it just creates a compressed zip folder for me and that's what camera raw will be expecting so let's open a camera raw file it, it doesn't matter which one it is uh, and I know I've got one back on my desktop here uh, and it's the the daylight DNG so I'll open that one in Adobe camera raw and here we are now what I need to do is to click on the the browse profiles little icon and then I'm going to go up to these three little dots here the more profiles option and I'm going to click on that and on from the drop down I'm going to select import profiles and presets and then I'm going to navigate to where my profile is so I know that I just need to go and find my desktop and I know I need to go down to my profiles folder there it is but this time it's the zip file that I'm needing so I'm just going to click once on the daylight zip file and click open and now if I scroll down there's a section called profiles now I've created some of these profiles for myself but if you haven't see if you can't see a profiles tab once you've created one it will appear and if I click to drop that one down you'll see that here I've got a now I've got my daylight profile and you can see all, all really from the get-go really how much difference it makes because at the moment I'm, I'm on Adobe color which is the standard one that Adobe comes with um, sorry there we go we're on Adobe color if I now go down and hover over my daylight profile you can see the effect it has on quite a few other colors it does make them much richer and this is what you'll find with your images as well so you could create a profile for say daylight like this um, for overcast uh, and it's just going to be a little bit more specific um, than just having a, a general generic one like Adobe color 
Now, if you're in a Lightroom user, then these profiles are automatically installed in the profiles drop down for you. Now, if you've got Lightroom open in the background while you've created this profile in Camera Raw, then it won't appear. What you have to do is close down Lightroom and then reopen Lightroom. And what we'll find now is that by magic, we've now got a profiles folder. And if I click on that, you'll see that this Olympus Daylight profile has been automatically installed. And by hovering over it, you can see the, the subtle sometimes, but sometimes not so subtle changes that take place. So at the moment, this is the profile that's creating this image is Adobe Color. But if I just hover over this, you can see that the greens become much richer and some of the purples become richer. And obviously the, the browny areas and the warmer tones of the image all get a little bit of a boost certainly worth the effort. Just one thing to remember is that these profiles are designed for use with your RAW files. If you find you accidentally click on a JPEG file, then all the profiles will disappear. Uh, you haven't lost them, uh, you've not deleted them. If you just click back on any other RAW file, they'll all appear again. So let's have a quick recap. RAW files are not visible. They are made up of data of zeros and ones. To make them visible, we need a profile to turn them into a viewable image. The default profile supplied by Adobe is Adobe Color. Now this is good, but it's not as good as creating a custom profile in the specific lighting conditions when we created an image. Now we can create our own custom profiles for specific lighting conditions. This means that your colours will be accurate and consistent under different lighting conditions, or if you have multiple camera bodies. Well, I hope that was useful. If it was, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment under the video. Both will help me reach more learners with my videos. And please click that subscribe button and become part of my Photoshop learning community. I'll see you in the very next video. Bye for now.